All right, so I think technically cicadas have two wings. It's like a smaller wing, but I'm not probably going to worry about that second wing. And if you want to add one, you will have all of the wing tricks that you need very shortly. So let's go ahead and actually, I think I'm just going to delete this one here. I don't know for sure if I'm going to be kind of, you know, doing a whole lot of cross because it gets a little close up there. So it's uh, isolated and then I can just go to delete hidden and delete hidden lives in modified topology, which is in geometry. Blah, blah, blah. Where is it? Close zero, uh, zero measure. Delete hidden is right here. Turn solo back on. So you can see like pretty quick and easy to create this kind of geometry just by masking on the side there. So what I want to do now is just kind of simplify this. I'm going to, I'm going to delete this, uh, this pointy part here. And then what I'd really like to do is just make this two dimensional. So we'll go to select lasso. This probably won't work, but it might. Follow this around, see if it goes. I can just do an auto groups. Yeah, it's folded somewhere. I know it's folded because it's the same color. There we go. So there was like just a weird little spot there, but it's it got almost all of it, which is pretty good. So now I can do I'll do a delete hidden and an auto groups, and now I can just delete this inside stuff, and I just have the outside. So we'll go ahead and do delete hidden, and now we just have the shell, which is probably good enough for the time being. But we're not going to see the other side of it. So you can actually, I think there might be an option in display properties to hit double. And now we can see the, that there are two sides. And this is mostly just kind of helping me figure out where some other stuff is and what proportions need to look like and all the rest of it. And keeping it simple like this makes it easier to edit. And if I just smooth it, I'm going to flatten it out, which is probably more accurate anyway. Okay. So let's say that's my wing for now. That should work. Maybe we'll give it some rotation towards the back, like rotating inward. Kind of feels like that's what it's doing here. But that's fine for now. Okay. So let's see. What else do we have? Maybe I'll put it on the other side so that I don't have to guess what's going on here. I can just hit mirror. Cool. All right, so now I'm gonna do a little more detail work up here. We can get rid of that little mast area. Feels like the head could be a lot wider. I think the eyes actually need to be like out here. Like a little hammerhead bug here. I don't know why. Oh, I guess I, I turned symmetry off so I could mask it. So we'll just go ahead and turn it back on. A little more integration of the eye into the face area. So you can kind of add some little arbitrary stuff, whatever. There are these, this is a really interesting feature right here. It's hard to see probably in this resolution, but there are three red additional eyes, I believe. Bugs are so cool. Get all the, all the fun stuff. So we'll probably include that. They could be like little sensors or something. And grab our little MAH. Whoops. Okay, I'm auto save there. Save your files. Very important. All right. So let's see. Um, kind of looking at this area there. We have the center thing, 
and some lines kind of like this and maybe I like that. The thing about this brush is you can get it kind of it'll it's a little rough on your geo so you just gotta make sure your geometry's got enough resolution so I just added another subdivision and I can also reduce my Z intensity not too much trouble. Keep things a little swoopy. And this piece here actually needs to wrap around a little bit closer to the bottom of the eye, looks like. This material may be a little bit tricky to see. I'm going to switch to another one. Oops, I just hit the wrong button. Kind of punch this in. I'm going to increase my Z intensity back up a little bit. And this is where all that stuff is happening. Looks like there's kind of a transition here. Nice little sort of a piece like this. And you can see how different it is between the two brushes, how much stuff gets left on the surface. So this is something that's, that uh, is an important concept. This was hammered into me years and years ago in art school, where you want to avoid things that are the same thickness. So my, I just have a tendency, I guess, to like, that's the same thickness as this. And this is kind of, they're all kind of the same, but if you look over here, it doesn't, I mean, it doesn't have that same bias. So just a thing to be aware of as you're working, just keep your eyes open for if you're just doing the same kind of, seeing yourself with the same kind of forms, the same kind of thicknesses like this right there needs to get like a little bit more like an hourglass shape or something. Flatten it down. We'll add a little bit more. Let's see, I think I'll use clay tubes. I want to add just a little bit of a sharper edge. Maybe damn standard is a better option. And it's not really a straight line, but it's close to a straight line. Close enough. Just fill in some of this stuff there. We do still want to make room for the Happy sculpting accidents. We also don't need to go too detailed here. Just trying to support the eye. Maybe it's still a little too small. Just scale it up a little bit and then crash it in. And I'll use clay tubes, add a bit more volume. All right, so there might be one or two other brushes worth showing very quickly that can help with this kind of stuff. do like um, some trim brushes. I think it's trim dynamic with lazy mouse. And what this will do is it'll give you like kind of a, like a planar trim almost. So it can be nice to get really, really clean edges, but it can tend to, in my opinion, it can tend to get a little bit hard to control end up with like uh, stuff that intersecting in areas that you didn't maybe mean to intersect, but it does give a very nice, clean, polished hard surface vibe when it's done. So it's worth having in your toolkit. And I think that's about 
that's really all I needed to talk about in terms of the, the brushes and the sculpting approach. I'm just going to continue that process until I feel like this thing is uh, ready to begin the next phase. And uh, I will record that and do it as a speed sculpt. So stick around for that.